Well, good morning. And uh, we're going to continue this study. And uh, this is a review of the book of Judges. But before we begin, can we open with a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful uh, once again for the time that we have to study together and for the precious things that you have shown us and for the work that you are doing in our lives day to day as we walk in the light that you have given us. We ask for strength and help in our trials and in the ministry that we do with those around us, those that we minister to. We know the suffering and pain that people are going through. And we ask, Lord, that your words can relieve and heal those that are suffering. We ask, Lord, that you can give us understanding as we continue to draw on a line, uh, the various judges. Help us to understand these things, to understand the details. But also, Lord, to understand the purposes and to be a part of them as they, your purposes are worked out uh, in our lives. Be with us now through thy Holy Spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. And... Um, we had gone through Deborah and Barack and that history, and we drew it on a line. And, um, you know, I, I looked over Judges chapter 5. There's lots of symbols there, but we've gone through Judges chapter 5. It's not really going to help us to draw it on a line. It's going to give us some more evidences that um, we would place um, the enemy, the message of Sisera, uh, which is the message of Parminder uh, from 2012 to 2019. And now we're going to look at the Midian oppression. Uh, but just before we do that, I want to go through this di diagram here uh, that Jeff has. And, well, this is not Jeff's diagram, but it is... Uh, like he didn't draw this, but it is what he had figured out <clears throat> that I had mentioned last time. And I just want to make sure that people understand this. So this was Jeff waking up on September 7th. So he's going to give this message, the last message from Lambert Church. And then there's uh, 63 days to November 9th, 2019. So... I mean, one of the things that I saw was the date, uh, September 9th, was 9 times 7, which is 63, and we have these 63 days. But Jeff expanded this even further. So he had drawn these dates out in the American fashion. September 7th would be 9-7, November 9th would be 11-9, and January 11th would be 1-11. I believe it was Odilio that noticed this that if we added those dates together as numbers, that is 97 plus 111 plus um, 119, we get 327. And 327 is, well, that's actually how Jeff had written the date over here, March 27th. So he would have written this as 327, like that. And again, you know, he would have written this as 111, right? Just like I wrote below. Um, now, the span of time then also was noted with 63 weeks, which is 441 days, which is an inversion of 144, one, four, right? Um, but then I had noticed that if we took the European or Canadian way, Canadians kind of do both because we're influenced by Americans, but uh, we would put the day and then the month. So you can see here we have 7-9 plus 9-11 plus 
11.1. So, so, of course, this one doesn't really change in its count, but these do. Now, if I do that, it adds up to 1101, which is 11.1, right? So, uh, though they are written differently, but you can see that the chances that you're going to take these dates and be able to produce both the starting date and the end date of this date, this date that is projected here, this way mark of, of 327.21. Now we can remember that this is the end of Parminder's line. Parminder's going to end uh, when Jeff stands up. There's going to be that uh, from August 29th to September 7th um, span, uh, nine days there. And that means that this here, this message now, um, that we're going to be in the time, not just of the end of the message of Cicero, but we're going to be moving into, in this history, a message dealing with uh, July 18, 2020. And to understand who the enemy is and how that enemy is defeated um, was is part of what happens when we study the book of Judges because we're applying it to our time. So we, we have to understand that if we're going to be able to place this on a line. <clears throat> so this Midian, Midianite oppression so again, we're going to look at the symbols that are here, um, as we have been doing. And we have already done these symbols. But again, after we've gone through uh, what we have, sometimes we go back and look at these things again. We see things that we did not see before. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Now. There are periods of seven years in scripture that are mentioned. Um, and what do they generally represent? Theodore, I hate interrupting, but on that last diagram you um, showed, yeah. Yeah. Was, that, was that March? March, what, on the last one, what was it? March what? March 27th, 2021. So that was the March 27th, 2021. That was part of the structure. That's going to be 252 days past uh, July 18th, 2020. And um, 273 days before December 25th, 2021. So that's part of that structure that Stephen and Odilio uh, created. Doing that's, this, uh, that's March 27th, 2021, right? Yeah, March 27th, 2021. So the Thank answer you. to the question is 2520. Yeah, okay. So the seven years represent the 2520. Now, so if we're under the hand of Midian, that there that means there is a 2520 that has been affecting this movement. Wouldn't we argue that? Because we, we've looked at the 2020 as a, as a judgment upon the church itself. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be the uh, 126? Okay. Okay, you're a little bit noisy there, Ron. Um, so the question is, wouldn't it be the 126? So if we have the 126 and we apply that to the church, we're going to apply that from... 1863 to 1989, and then later we had from 1888 to 2014. So, so one thing I guess we could say is that the 126 from 1863 to 1989 would be addressing the church, but the 126 that's going to end in 2014 is not about the church. It would refer to this movement and 
we saw that what happened in this movement was this work that, of separation that began in 2014. So if we're going to go from 2014 and we're going to take seven years, that's going to bring us to 2021. And, and we saw in that diagram, we were being brought to 2021, to March 27th, 2021. Um, is it possible that this seven years could be take in, taken in both that literal sense of seven actual years, maybe not exactly, you know, to the day, um, and that this would apply also in this 126 years. So that this is something about this movement that began in 2014 and continues also for seven years. And that is represented by um, the Midianite oppression. <clears throat> Because we see some characteristics about this Midianite impression in that it has caused the children of Israel to have to make their homes in the dens, the mountains, the caves, and the strongholds. <clears throat> so what is this oppression particularly? that we could apply to our movement. <coughs> and we're also going to have the Amalekites come up. Kind of a scattering. Want to be like a scattering? Well, no, not, I guess not within the seven years. Okay, well, but, but in a way we can look at this movement has gone through a scattering that begins in 2014 when all these ministries leave. Yeah, all true. True. Um, and it says, when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. So remember, these are representing messages. This is not to be, even though we're using seven years and we're using all these symbols, um, we're saying that it's about messages in this movement. So if Israel represents God's true people and we've had sown, uh, that would be a giving of a message. But other messages are going to come and they're going to be attacking this message, the true message that God has given. And, and would we see that from 2014? That there are different groups, different messages that are coming against this message yes okay now we have of course the midianites that are the main oppressors yet we can see other groups other messages are coming against this message and, and it's because of the Midianite oppression. So again, we're, we're, this is a bit of a repeat and enlarge. We're, we're not going to say this is particularly Parminder's message because that's been addressed in the other message. <coughs> but we're going to have this Midianite message and um, when we look up uh, Midian, right, so this is going to, this refers to strife. That's the meaning of the word. And could this Midianite oppression be just the general strife or conflict that exists within the music movement from 2014? Is it a message of strife or that causes strife? It causes causes strife, I would think. Okay. 
maybe it's a critical score that comes into the movement. What's that, Dwight? Why isn't this a message that is preparing us to be able to withstand the strife that's going to come later? Well, because the Midianite message is uh, this is the enemy, right? Agreed. So, so the message is have- Gideon. What's that? Don't we have to be prepared to be able to face the enemy? Mm-hmm. And, and God's left these enemies in the land to, to test them. Now, the Midianites are, are descendants of Abraham by Keturah, right? So we know that they're not, um, they're not the peoples of the land that were there. Um, but they, so they are relatives, but they're going to oppress right. Israel. And, and we went right. through this in, in detail, the story of Gideon. Um, but here, if, we, if we're going to look at just the meaning of the name Midian, that this is strife, and if we're going to look some, at something that characterizes is the movement that didn't characterize it between uh, before 2014, I think is the strife that exists within the movement. We have a much more divided movement after 2014, not just with the people that left, but also within the movement itself. There's a lot more uh, uh, disaffection going on, infighting, um, after 2014. A lot more suspicion. In a sense, 2014 kind of removed uh, that innocence, that unity that appeared to exist within the movement. And now we saw that um, just because someone was in the movement didn't mean that they were on the Lord's side. And doesn't this, what's that? Doesn't this parallel what was happening just prior to the cross? Mm-hmm. I mean, when, when the Savior gave his message that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, there were many that chose not to walk any further with him, right? Yeah. Doesn't this parallel what's been going on within the movement? Well, I mean, there's definitely a progression of this. I mean, this test comes to people all the time. But in, yeah, so this, but we would try to place this at 2014 is is one of my main points here. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just asking if this isn't just another example. Yeah, yeah, this would be another example. But we, we would have to place it at 2014. I don't think we could place it earlier, even though it had begun earlier. It doesn't become evident until 2014. And so, I mean, I'm placing Parminder as coming in in 2012, uh, 2014. I mean, he's going to continue, obviously, so that this is going to cover some of the same area. But the enemy itself here, that's oppressing us is is a judgment given by God because God is seeking to chastise this movement. And Midian is this strife that exists within the movement is meant here to chastise us. Right? God has left these enemies to prove us, to test us. And seven years is a symbol of Leviticus 26, and and some people have even pointed to this as an example because Ellen White says, talking about Deuteronomy 28, but also in relationship to Leviticus 26, that uh, it had a partial fulfillment in the period of the judges, uh, but received a more complete fulfillment um, in the captivity of Israel uh, by Assyria and Judah by Babylon. So these 
these sister chapters of Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, um, both refer to seven as a symbol. But it is in Leviticus 26 where we could take the seven and literally apply it as a seven times. And this is in the period of the judges. So some people have taken this story and said, this is Leviticus 26 um, as applied in the period of the judges. So you're going to have Midian uh, here. And we have this at the end of 126 years, the seven times, 2014, that we have now a period of seven years that is going to end in 2021. So from 2014 to 2021, we could say is this period of seven years. And during this period of seven years, other enemies come up, the Amalekites, the children of the east. Even they came up against them. So these are other messages. Now, Amalek, the characteristic of Amalek, Dwight. What's the characteristic? How would that be manifest in our movement since 2014? Or anyone else? I don't know. Dwight might be away from his phone or something. Oh, it's like Dan, a backbiter attacking from the rear, attacking right. the weakest. Right. And so we see that happening in our movement, right? And then the children of the East, how would that, what message would that characterize? Because these are oppressors. So, so we're going to have all kinds of attacks against this movement from the groups that left. So the children of the East would characterize what message coming against our message. Because we know the book of Joel um, had to do with um, in an in interpretation that it had to do with Islam, right? Where Jeff said, no, it had to do with Rome. So would this be a message, a false message regarding Islam? Or is it something else? Okay, so we know that we have to, that, um, that they're going to have to hide, right, in these caves and mountains and strongholds. And they camped, encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till they came unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass, for they came up with their cattle and their tents. And they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. So you can see this characteristic of grasshoppers of Islam. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of, of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God, fear not, the God of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. 
So we know that there's a prophet who gives this message to Israel, um, saying that you basically are <coughs> are under this oppression because you haven't obeyed me. And so this is a message. Now again, we we've been applying this to the movement. Right? That's how we've understood the book of Judges. But there's the call of Gideon. So we've looked at the, at the message of Gideon as a message regarding July 18th. And, and Jeff has applied the story of Gideon, the 300, to the message of July 18th. I mean, he had applied Gideon to this movement <coughs> and in other ways as well. But as we came to July 18th, we particularly applied it to that. Now, we can see that this message of Gideon comes from the threshing of wheat by the wine press. So what are the two symbols there? Repeat your question, please. Well, we have the threshing of wheat by the wine press. So there are two symbols, threshing of wheat and the wine press. The word of God and the doctrines. Okay. So, and, and we could say, of course, um, because these are both processing places. Right. Right. So... Uh, the Holy Spirit is represented by wine, but in the wine press, we can see that this is um, both the doctrines, but also the character that comes from uh, through the Holy Spirit, through the understanding of scriptures. And the threshing of wheat, again, is the study of the scriptures. So these two be together. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, an organization and understanding of truth that comes from study of God's word and, and line upon line is the method uh, method that God has given us. Now we know we have this oak and we can tie this oak to, to Nashville, to the Nashville prediction. I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but we also have an angel of the Lord giving us this message. Gethsemane is a wine press, a severe trial of our faith. Yeah. So God's people are going to go through this trial. And we can see that Gideon has this great trial in, in what he's going to go through personally. And this would illustrate this movement because this movement has gone through a trial that is characterized by the story of Gideon. And because we've been oppressed, we need to know what we are oppressed by and what we need to do to be delivered from that oppression. So we have this prophet who gives this message. And in this context here, uh, Gideon appeals to God because of this message that they've been oppressed. <coughs> and then the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent thee so part of this message is this characterization of Gideon in that he is seeking to be delivered but he's not seeking to be a deliverer right God is choosing a message that's going to do a work 
but it's not some um, message that on the surface would appear to be able to do that work. So we see Gideon's response. He said unto him, O oh, mo- oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. So here we see that there's this characterization of this message, because Gideon is a message. Um, And that this message doesn't appear to have the power to do, to deliver uh, Israel. Uh, Gideon says he's poor in Manasseh, and he's the least in his father's house. So we're not having some mighty uh, person, some important person um, here. And so the messages that that have been given, the message, especially when we look at the message of July 18th, it was not considered an important message. Within FFA, um, it was relegated, it was marginalized. The message of chronology became marginalized and the message of July 18th became marginalized. But it's gonna have its its time in the Nashville uh, proclamation. Nashville warning. Now, there is these signs that are asked for. So we spent some time with these signs. Does anybody remember why we have these signs and how we would understand them as they relate to this message? So we know there's the fleece. We have also the, uh, when it's wet and dry, and we also have this offering that's being made. So he's going to make this uh, this offering, which is going to represent a sacrificial offering, though he believes he's just preparing a meal. So what is this about? How did we understand this? Or do we have to go through it again in detail? He was wanting to show respect to... Yeah the angel that had come to him. Yeah. And this angel was told that... Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so this angel, would we say that this angel, that this message that comes, that it's the angel that comes uh, uh, in Revelation 18? That would be a good parallel. Okay, and then you say he shows respect unto this angel, unto this message, the 9-11 message. It's like saying that I understand the message. Yeah, okay. And, and it's not a rejection of the message. It accepts this message that has been given to this movement, um, both in what Agreed. Jeff has done in, in understanding Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, but also in the empowerment of that message that occurred at 9-11. And so this this message, this message of Gideon, is respectful towards this other message. It's accepting this message. And also we see that this is, in doing so, it's not just that it's respect. I mean, this is a work of sacrifice that's being done. Right? In order to accept the message of Revelation 18, we would have to have the work that God wants to do in us um, occur, right? So there has to be not just an intellectual assent that you know 9-11 happened and it means something, but it has to accomplish a work in us, which is the work of salvation. So 
So he's going to set out this food, and the angel of God um, is going to take, put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touch the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. So, so we have this first um, illustration. And, and I, I can say that, you know, in some ways we can see this as being 9-11 because 9-11 represents baptism. Um, it's an understanding of 9-11. And 9-11 itself uh, as an event could be characterized here as well. So I'm not sure exactly how to understand this, but definitely we can see that, that this message of Gideon is connected to the message of 9-11. It's connected to the message that Jeff has given. Um, so if, if we go on and we see here, you know, so Gideon builds an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. But unto this day, it is yet in Ophrah of the Abba Ezrites, Abba Ezrites. Um, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto, unto him, take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath cut down, the grove that is by it. So we're going to see that one is we're going to have this bullock offering, and it's going to be seven years old. So they've been in oppression for seven years <clears throat> as a symbol. And um, we now have... Um, hit this command to throw down the altar of Baal. Um, that is you, has. What's that? Are you saying um, the bullock represents oppression? No, <clears throat> this is a sacrifice. But I'm saying that it's in response to the seven years that they're oppressed by Midian, and he's going to have a seven-year-old bullock. So that means this bullock would have been born at the time that the oppression began. That's what I'm saying. That, that God responds to um, evil in like kind. You know, for instance, even Leviticus 26, they're going to be... Um, transgressing the sabbatical rest of the land. So God is going to give a judgment based upon the sabbatical cycle, right? That would be logical. So we see the same type of thing here. That's why the bullock uh, is seven years old. It's symbolizing this period of oppression, but it's a message that counters it. That's going to conquer it. When I see young and second, I kind of see like the SDA and then the movement. Okay. Uh, uh, the second being the smaller, the younger. Okay. Now, so here he's going to take thy father's young bullock. Now, uh, as far as what that means... Um, So I'm not sure if young bullock is a good translation here, but um, I'm not really sure why they translate it as young bullock. I don't see that there in the Hebrew at all. I'm just going to see what Young's literal. 
So it seems like, though, there's going to take two different bullocks. A young one is what they translate it as. I'm not sure why, though. Um, I don't see the word young there. but um, And another bullock. So these are going to be two bullocks, right? That's how we're understanding this. He's going to take two bullocks, one that's young and one that's seven years old. So what was your reason for uh, uh, how are you interpreting this, these two different bullocks? Because in, in the past, uh, I've noticed that when he talks of the younger, it was more of the group, like the younger brother and whatever. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not really sure, though, this word. I just don't understand why. I mean, obviously one's seven years old. I just don't see why they say young. I mean, I mean, maybe it does mean young in the context of being a bullock. I don't know, but it doesn't, it doesn't say young. But anyway, you're going to have two bullocks. One that's not seven years old and one that is. So yeah. would it be the joining of a Israel and Judah type thing? Um, I don't know if I would do that. I'm not sure. Just there's two. One specifically seven years old. One, its age is undefined, but probably younger. Um so he's going to offer them, he's going to throw down the altar of Baal, and he's going to build an altar unto the Lord upon the top of this rock and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Um, see, I don't know if this is two bullocks. I think this is one. Um because I think the second, uh, why would it be the second bullock? Why wouldn't it be two, two bullocks? Well, because it doesn't say anything about offering the first bullock. And... And it could just be a repeat, you know, take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock now of seven years old. Now, I'm not sure why they would have second, so I, I don't. What if, what if this is to, to represent the initial time period of the church and then our time period right now within the movement? <clears throat> well, okay. Because the way that I'm reading this here is that this is just like this idea of a second bullock is not really, again, a good translation. Um, it just means uh, uh, take, a, take thy father's young bullock, again, a bullock of seven years old, right? Um, and take again the bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice. So... I don't, I don't know if I see two bullocks here. That's all I'm saying. Whether that the symbols, interpreting what the symbols might mean if there is two or just one, I just don't see it here in the Hebrew is all I'm saying. I don't see it in the verse. He's told to offer this second, second bullock, as it says.
So I don't know. Okay. If we were to look at this, um, from the notes that we went through at that time, since we're dealing with um, verse 25, the notes would have also given us a reference I believe back to Exodus 34:13 and Deuteronomy 7:5. Yeah, that's breaking down their altars, their their images, their groves. And Deuteronomy what? 7:5. Yeah, it's just going to say the same thing. So it's not going to tell us anything about the bullock itself. I just think there's only one bullock here. Is that's all I'm saying? I don't. He offers one bullock. It's seven years old. There isn't two bullocks being mentioned. But I, I don't remember us discussing this, uh, that detail before. Okay, hang, I, I'm going back into this for just a second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea so, here is there's one one bullock. That he offers. Okay. So the the translators as they had this mm -hmm. shows an alternate, what they called alternate Hebrew. So the alternate reading that they would have had was, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, take thy father's young bullock and the second bullock of seven years old mm -hmm. and throw down the altar of Baal un that thy father hath and cut down thy grove that is by it. Mm -hmm. Now, Gideon is a message. Mm -hmm. Now, Gideon is the message within the movement. Yeah. We're, we're making this application that Gideon is the message of July 18th. Yeah. But the message of July 18th is a repeat of a message that had been given to Ellen White that the church chose not to offer. Mm -hmm. So the bullock itself, is this not a support for the message? Yes. So would we not be able to symbolically look at this as support for the message that was given in 1905 and now support for the message the the message supported by the seven times of Leviticus 26 yeah that was given July 18th 2020 mm -hmm. yeah Now, I agree. I mean, there's there's a lot here we have to consider, but we're looking at this symbolically and not literally. Right. But there is only one bullock, not two being mentioned here in the Bible. Well, I'm I'm asking 
if we can consider it the, in the other fashion. Why? Uh, I, I don't understand why. The Bible is just saying there's one bullock. Why would we try to create two? Okay. Father's young bullock and a second bullock of seven years old. Would you call a bullock of seven years old still a young bullock? Well, again, it doesn't say young bullock in Hebrew. Right? And it doesn't even say second bullock in Hebrew. Right? So that's all I'm saying is it doesn't say this. It doesn't say there's a young bullock and a seven-year-old bullock. <clears throat> it, it appears that way when you read it superficially in the King James. But even when they say even the second bullock, um, when they say even, they mean the same. They're, they're telling you it's the same bullock. That's, what, that's how the King James translators, when they use the word even in this context, the Father's Young Book, even the second bullock of seven years. So they would be saying that this is um, a bullock of seven years. It's not, it's young. You know, they're using the word young there, but it doesn't use the word young in Hebrew. And then they're saying it's of seven years, but the word even, and that's why they give this alternate reading of and, that would have two different bullocks, but even would only have one. Then why in, in this situation, we do not have the words in the italics to show an added word. Why would they have seen it in this way, translating the Bible in 1611 and then again in 1769 to to straighten out all the um the different verbiage so okay. it's consistent well, they have two di two different words for bullock and and they translated as young bullock and then they have um even the second that's all a translation of one word which is usually translated as again all right. Right. So all I'm saying is there's only one bullock mentioned here. There's not two. And it's a bullock of seven years old. So. Which represents 25. What's that? So the seven represents the 2520? Mm-hmm. Okay. Seven years represents the 2520. So they, they have a judgment against them. That's a seven years oppression. And but they're given a message that is related to that that oppression. It's a bullock that was born at the time that this oppression began. Right, literally, so in this context. But here symbolically it's representing the message of the seven times. And here we're going to have the altar of Baal thrown down. So, so there is something in this message, something that has to be thrown down, that this message of the seven times is going to correct. And it would be characterized as the altar of Baal. So it's not something good, it's something that's bad. So in um, verse 26, the second bullock is not the second bullock. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't say second bullock in Hebrew. In either verse then? Yeah. They translate it as second. Uh, and the word can mean second, but it actually just means again. Take again the bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. They could have easily translated it that way. So, but they chose to translate it as second, the second for some reason. Now, there is in a sense, this is a repeat, right? Would you take the wood of the grove as the um, uh, 
pastors of uh, that are talking uh, wrong. Well, well, these, well, these the right okay. Yeah, I would say these represent messages, and, and messages within the movement. So, we have this oppression. And we have an altar that's being built in this movement, which is a message of some sort. And the message of July 18 has to tear down this altar. Right. And it's going to offer this bullock, which is the seven times. Right. To counter uh, a false message that's been oppressing this movement. Now, you know, we have the seven times here. So we know that there is, there's a correct understanding of the seven times. This movement comes to understand the seven times in a deeper way than Millerite. Uh, the Millerites understood the seven times. A deeper way than Hiram Edson understood it. There's a resistance to the message of the seven times within the movement. That is the additional light that comes regarding the seven times. Not everyone accepts it. Many people who, are, who used to be in this movement um, who still accept the seven times, most of them have rejected it. But the ones that still do, most of them will only accept Miller's seven times. They won't accept Hiram Edson's. They won't accept anything that goes beyond 1844. Right, so they're not going to take the prophet prophetic mirror. So if you put in Hiram Edson's, even though it ends in 1798, um, it's, it's going to create this prophetic mirror that's going to end in 1863. And so to avoid that, they just reject... Uh, um, Hiram Edson seven times. They reject that one, even though Miller taught it as well. So not sure why they do that. But. Yeah, so we know that here, you know, because we're trying to understand how this relates to this movement. I mean, we wouldn't say that this movement is oppressing itself. So the, the message of the Midianite oppression are messages that come from outside, right? But they are attacking this movement. And there's sympathy in this movement towards that oppression, that is, they're offering sacrifices to Baal on this altar, even though these are the enemies that are oppressing them, correct? Agreed. Now, this message of July 18th recognizes this. So it's going to be called upon to throw down the altar of Baal and to establish um, an altar unto the Lord. It's going to replace this altar. And we're going to have the seven times now prepared as a burnt offering with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. So Gideon took 10 men of his servants and did as the Lord had said. And as the Lord had said unto him, and so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day that he did it by night. So, so Gideon is gonna have to do this at the nighttime. He's got 10 men of his servants. So we have 10 as a symbol. Ten can mean a test, right? Ten can also mean a remnant. Though usually it's a tenth, but. Now 
And he's going to do it by night, but not by day. So what would that symbolize? Maybe in darkness. Okay, well, I mean, it's definitely in darkness, but I mean, this is midnight. I mean, okay, midnight. Studying in private. Okay. So, so studying in private. I mean, we wouldn't say that the message of July 18th was done in some sort of. Um, you know, secretive way, but definitely um, it was not accepted by the movement, and studying occurred um, in that on that message, not with the intent of sort of subverting the movement, um, but it was just done because there was no other opportunity. The movement had rejected that message of July 18th. But so how that came about, what this would mean by day and by night, I mean, it definitely isn't something bad. And, and, and when we studied July 18th, at least my understanding of it, there was nothing about any of the studying that I did, whether it was the 2520, understanding the four, seven times, any of these things were meant to oppose somebody's position or to, um, you know, draw attention to myself personally. There was no seeking anything other than truth in the study of these things. And yet these things were often criticized. The, ex the study of the 2520, uh, the paper that I put out, on the 2520. Uh, people were pretty upset with Jeff about that paper and believe that, that that paper should be condemned. You know, the paper is why is there not a 25, 20 year period of literal punishment or punishment for literal Israel uh, mentioned in Leviticus 26. I can't remember the exact title now. Um, but People just took that paper and, and failed to understand it. But we can see that through the study of the 2520, through the study of all of these things to support this message, we now had this new understanding of chronology and of the symbolic use of numbers that, um, that developed, that God was going to use. So we have the men of the city arose early in the morning. Behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock, which was offer, offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, bring out thy son that he may die because he has cast down the altar of Baal. And because he hath cut down the grove that was by it, and Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death, whilst it is yet morning. If he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Therefore on that day they called him Jerubbaal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. And then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and Abiezer was gathered after him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and unto Naphtali. And they came up to meet him, meet them. So. So we know that, um, because we had gone through this, but if we're going to take this story, um, where would we mark this? The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet, and Ebi Ezer 
was gathered unto him. That is, the father of help is Ebenezer. Wouldn't it be Jeff blowing the trumpet? Okay, well, we're not going to have people here. Um, so, so we'd have to look at this message of July 18th. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon this message of July 18th. Right? A trumpet is blown. Now, a trumpet would represent um, a number of things, but it can refer to the message of the trumpets in Revelation, the seven trumpets. And the father of help was gathered after him. So did the message of July 18th, when, when would we mark this? I mean, that's the question is, when would we mark this on a timeline that the Spirit of the Lord came upon the message of July 18th? Would this be just Jeff accepting this message the second time? Because he accepted it originally, then set it aside, and then accepted it again. Right, because, yeah, we're, we're going to try not to, you know, say, well, this is Jeff, per se. Um, but we could, we could take this message in place, you know, we could say, well, this happened went on uh, June 21st or something like that. Or this represents June 21st and June 22nd, 2020. The father of help would be maybe June 22nd. gathered after him so we're going to have the message proclaimed and then it's going to be uh, public publicly uh, promoted by all this other source of media I mean is that a possibility would we accept my interpretation here I'm not saying it's the right one Because we see a proclamation of a message here, right? Is, is that what's, what's here being described? The warning to Nashville, or is it something else? I would almost have to think that it's the warning to Nashville. Okay. Now, of course, we're going to have the sign of the fleece, right? So, and it doesn't mean that this stuff occurs chronologically either, because this can now be a repeat and enlarge. Um, and, and I'm taking this this way. So I'm taking this story of the tearing down of the altar of Baal, and of the offering of this seven-year-old bullock, and and then this um, the blowing of then the trumpet by Gideon, and the father of help gathering after him, and these messengers being sent out, as the warning being given. This is a warning to. Um, the United States to Nashville. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you say why you say yes? Can what? What's the things that you see? The warning to Nashville. Um, that is the primary one. That's why I, I dated then. Yeah. So, so you're saying yes to the idea that this is, is talking about that. And now we're going to go back and look at the sign of the fleece and these other things. And it's basically, it's not continuing a story that's progressive. It's actually repeating and enlarging this story. 
That's what it seems like. Okay. Yeah, that's the way I understand it. So the sign of the fleece then, this is for Gideon himself. That's right. Because now he's he has to stand. He's, he's made this proclamation. But now he's going to have to stand. He's unsure of himself. This message is unsure of itself. Right. The people giving it are unsure of it in some ways. But signs are going to be given. So we have the sign, of course, with the offering. But now he's going to have this sign of the fleece. And, and we have the two ways, which we know, you know, first you're going to have the fleece be wet and the floor dry. And then you're, he's going to do the reverse, right? So he said, well, you know, maybe the fleece just absorbed the moisture and the floor didn't. Um, I think that's how, so you put the, the fleece of wool on the floor, right? And if the dew be on the fleece only, right? So he's going to. Do this, and he wrings the dew out of the fleece into a bowl full of water, right? So he's going to have all this water. Um, we'd have to, you know, understand what the fleece means. This is wool. How does that, what does that symbolize, I guess? Um, and then he's going to have the fleece being dry, but the dew on all the ground. I, I don't think we ever addressed so yeah, just, I, yeah but you have these two different tests almost opposite tests <clears throat> and they're signs now now god has given us all kinds of signs and symbols as to the truthfulness of this message But why these two inverted signs? What what would that illustrate? Mm. Would it illustrate a mirror? Well, yeah, it could. I mean, I was thinking a doubling, but it didn't sound right, like for being a third doubling. But when, now that you mentioned the mirror, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now. Right, it's a yeah. Now, the thing that I think about this sign in particular is um, <clears throat> the work that was done in regard to understanding July eighteenth. Once, once we had July eighteenth, we had we had two different um, prophecies that gave us the date July eighteenth. We had Ezekiel um, chapter four. And we had Revelation chapter 9, 390 uh, days and 40 days lying on his left side and his right side. Um, they gave us the July 18th date. They gave us the Julian date, which ended up being July 31st. And Revelation 9 gave us the July 18th, 2020 date, the Gregorian date of July 18th. And so we had these two amazing uh, structures, things that we had studied in the past that gave us these witnesses. But I would think the sign of the fleece is not that. To me, it would be the other things that we came to study that bore witness to July 18th, particularly something that is repeated. Um, and one would be, we took... Um, um, Millerite history, the line, Midnight, Midnight Cry. And we took the prophecy of uh, Revelation 9 with the symbols, July 27th, and um, the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. And we laid them on a line dealing with the first atomic bomb. Right? Would that be a sign equivalent to the sign of the fleece? At least, um, could we say that?
Well, it was that sign that, you know, got us looking at the nuclear aspect of the, the message. Okay, so yeah, not everybody necessarily knows how it all uh, unfolded. Um, but basically, when we, when we came up with July 18th, the initial thing is this is going to be an atomic attack on the United States, right? That's going to be how we would see this. Here, I'm going to bring up this uh, other screen. Because, I mean, we just couldn't see that there would be anything else that would fit the bill. <clears throat> and we were expecting an attack on the United States by Islam. I mean, that was since 2014, December of 2014, that we had that idea. Maybe it's December, yeah, December of 2014. Now... The first thing, of course, was it's it's a nuclear attack. I'm going to look up the first nuclear attack that occurred. That's Hiroshima. It's August 6th, but it's the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. So that's going to be quite interesting. And then, of course, we looked up Nagasaki. That's August 9th, but that's going to be July 27th on the Julian calendar. So again, we have those two symbols now, the 26th day of the fourth month and July 27th connected. And then we also have Kokura, which was supposed to be the place that the bombing was going to happen on August 11th. They moved it two days earlier and moved it to Nagasaki. They actually wanted to bomb Kokura two days earlier. They first went there. They weren't able to, the cloud cover was too much. So then they took this secondary target of Nagasaki and bombed it on August 9th. So the bombing for Kukura could have occurred on August 9th. <coughs> but their weather forecast for August 11th was not good. So, so, so we have the Kukura date as nothing that happened, but we have it as a symbol. And, um, and then we saw the surrender occurred on August 15th. We have a symbol there for the midnight cry. Now, the Potsdam Declaration, which actually occurred on July 26th, um, was rejected on July 27th by Japan. And so here we see July 27th Gregorian, and we see the 26th day of the fourth month, the biblical date, we see July 27th, we see August 11th. So we see those in those four dates, you have those four events that are all tied together and, and always given. Um, you see all the symbols there that we get from Josiah Lich's Revelation 9 prophecy. But you also have the midnight cry. Now, Alamogordo is where they first test the bomb. That's July 16th, but it's the fifth day of the fourth month, which we have as a symbol of midnight. Or Yeah, so that's midnight. And we have the August 15th date, the midnight cry. Now, in the one documentary I saw of Alamogordo, when they get to July 16th, they go July 16th, midnight, as a, it's an old documentary with the, the screen just saying July 16th, midnight. Um, so I thought that was interesting, <clears throat> that that midnight was tied there because we have the symbol for midnight. But then we also know there was a third planned attack. This was called off, and this attack was originally planned for August 19th. And that happens to be the 10th day of the fifth month, the other date, the date from Ezekiel that we have for July 18th. So here we have all of these dates tied up. Would this be fleece set out as a sign? I would say so. Second okay. witness. Yeah. Another so, witness. yeah, and so for me, it would be, right? Because this is where we are at, me and Odilio and Stephen, um, studying this July 18th, in a sense, looking for signs, right? Are we correct? Is there any other witnesses that this is so? Now, the other sign I would take had to do with uh, the Mayan calendar. So I'm not going to go in, into that. 
But that was the other sign for me. So I had this Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, the nuclear attack on Japan and all the different symbols associated with that. Japan also having suicide bombers. Japan also being from the east, <coughs> from the rising of the sun, right? That's their flag. Um, so, so for me, um, this was an important sign. The other sign, and, and there's lots more to it. I'm not going to go into all, all the different um, structures and so forth. But the other signs were the things that came from the Mayan calendar had to do with the structure of these dates and, and how the Mayan calendar tied into um, all of these different dates that we had already established. So, so there's going to be these signs, and, and these are needed in order for us to to go ahead with this message. So when Stephen and Odilio went down to Arkansas in November, late November of 2019, I mean, they were giving some of these evidences, um, all of these chronological and numerical evidences for why we should be supporting this July 18, 2020 prediction. And so I would see that that makes sense to see those as the fleece. Is there anything else we could? Uh, could we say uh, the truth was in the fleece, but then it uh, was it came up dry for us. But from it, the water was all around, so we were getting other messages from it. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I I just see them as a mirror type of of sign. That is, they're not, um, they're a repeat, they're, they're repeated. So I look at them as a history being repeated. That's why I would say, you know, what happened with uh, Hiroshima, why it becomes significant. We look back into the past and we see, well, here's something that illustrates this. Now, the Mayan calendar structure um, and also the 777 because it's related to it. Uh, the 777 chiasm, the one that begins with the Mayan date, um, uh, December 21st, 2012, where it's 13000 is the Mayan date. Um, these become extremely powerful witnesses to that what we're doing is of God, but they also witness, that is the second sign, witnesses that the, that the prediction will not occur. So if we're going to take the sign of the fleece as the fleece being wet is the first one, that would represent Nagasaki and, and Hiroshima and all that, all the stuff associated with uh, illustrating that it's Nashville and, and everything. But the second one uh, shows the fleece is dry. And if we're going to take that as this negative sense, <coughs> that would be the failure of the prediction. Right. Which which the Mayan date is going to show is that just like the Mayan date, the world didn't end December 21st, 2012. Um, and also the secret rapture didn't happen on September 23rd, 2017, as the evangelicals showed. And that's all part of that structure. Uh, yet those were correct dates. They were part of a structure that points to something else. That God is used. Uh, as a witness, but also showing us that our prediction would not occur as expected. So these signs um, symbolically represent um, a promise of something happening, but also it not happening, the fleece being dry. Is that reasonable? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to, we're not going to go into the next chapter right now. I'm just going to go to the whiteboard here and we're going to take a look at uh, this. Okay. So 
Are you going to try to place some of this stuff now? Yeah, I'm just going to draw this out. This should be interesting. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm obviously going to have to erase a little bit of this. So we got, um, so we got, I guess, I'm just going to kind of jam this in here a bit more. So this can be Shankar. Um, so look at this here. So we've got Chamgar, and then we know, of course, we're going to have this whole thing dealing with Parminder. So we're going to have, uh, so we're going to have Cicero down, but I guess Cicero would be up here. Parminder. This is going to be 2012, 2014, Parminder comes in, and of course that uh, deliverer there was, um, my mind's going blank. <laughs> uh, what's the name that we put here for the judge? My brain's going blank too. Barak. Sorry? We get Barak. Okay, so there we got Deborah and Barack. <coughs> okay. And then we're going to have, um, so this is, of course, going to span a period of time, right? Ending in 2019. So maybe I should do it over here, 2019. But as we have this end up happening, um, we're then going to have this period of oppression that's going to occur. So we're going to call this period of oppression going from 2014 to 2021, right? <coughs> so this is this is going to be the seven years again, just like we had back here. But this seven years here um, is that seven years of oppression. So in this history, we're going to have the message of Gideon. And the message of Gideon is going to occur at the end of this history. So 2019, it's going to begin before, but it's going to be in 2019 because remember, Parminder comes to an end. September 7th occurs, and we have that whole structure. And that whole structure is going to point to 2021. That we, that we saw that Jeff had created with that 63 weeks going from January 11th, uh, 2020 to March 27th, 2021. But we also know this is going to go to December 25th, 2021. So it's these things overlap. But in this message of Gideon, we have these tests, right? So I'm just going to do them here um, as far as the tests. So we have um, the message of Gideon comes to prominence, prominence in 2019. And it's going to be in 2019 that we, we, we have these tests. Okay. So they're not necessarily seen by everyone or everyone's not experiencing them. But we're going to have the messages that are given as far as, and we're going to see this. I don't know the best way to illustrate this. Um, but when we get to, let's do it this way. When we're at November 9th, 2019, Stephen Odilio and myself are at the School of the Prophets, right? Uh, Stephen and Odilia have been there quite a while before, and they stay quite a while afterwards. They're going to present all of these chronological and numerical uh, numbers. But does anybody know what I presented on November 9th, 2019? 
Anybody know what I presented? <laughs> I actually looked at it last night, but I, but I can't remember the title of it. Well, it was 273, right? I think that was it. Yeah. Now, it was 273, but it was in connection with Mayan calendar that I showed this, that I illustrated this. Now, I didn't at this time have the 777 structure that was going to show that our prediction was going to fail. But we get to November 9th. This movement is now accepting July 18th. We're presenting all of these tests. We're presenting the fleece. And I'm going to present the 273 in connection with the Mayan calendar. So I'm going to show that the Mayan calendar witnesses to July 18, 2020. These were new things that I had just come to understand back on October uh, 10. So just basically a month before I'd come to understand this. Um, and that was in f connection and fulfillment of a prophecy that I came to understand it. Um, but this 273 witnessing to not just the, the symbol for the Levites, but also to July 18th, tying all of these things together. I mean, I have all kinds of videos on this and people can watch it. Um, but this to me was the other fleece. So Stephen and Adilio are presenting the fleece that, that the fleece is going to be wet, but I'm the one who's going to end up presenting that the fleece is going to be dry. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But these both mm -hmm. these places are witnesses to July 18th. Right? It's, it's not like mine is, is not witnessing to July 18th. It is. I'm just going to change my mics here. But the fleece is going to be dry, and I don't see that yet on November 9th, 2019. But, mm -hmm. I, am, but I am going to see it uh, by April of 2020. Okay, Rosanna, you had a comment? Yeah, um, I just something just came to me. What if the fleece being wet means we were all together in the message? And the dry means we were all scattered. Well, uh, probably secondarily it can mean that because when the prediction fails, it is going to be uh, a scattering that happens with the movement. But the one thing I see is that there is much more reception to Stephen and Odilio's studies than to mine. I don't know if other people saw that. Well, I, I was noticing it. Okay. Yeah, and, and we're also going to notice that, um, I mean, one is they gave me very little time to present. They just had me do basically the superintendent remarks. Uh, they did give me the second meeting because um, uh, Toby actually asked for it in the afternoon. Um, but, you know, I was there. I, I, I've you know, flew down to Arkansas, you would think that they would have done a little bit more as far as presentations on July 18th itself. Instead, they were focusing the next day upon my November 22nd, 2018 date, you know, which I've talked about before. So, so there wasn't really the interest to have me doing presentations. Um, uh, Jeff had brought me there, of course, for me, Stephen and Odilio to, to study together. Uh, but I was kind of surprised at that. And then all through the time up to July 18th, you're not going to be seeing me presenting on any of FFA's uh, Sabbath studies or, or anything. So um, I will tell you what I, I got out of your, that whole thing that was going on was that I was noticing that um, uh, people were kind of apprehensive about all the numbers. Yeah, but Stephen uh, and Odilio were presenting lots of. Numbers. I know that. I know that. Yeah. Uh, it was just that I noticed that uh, all of that attention um, had kind of gotten into that number aspect, always in, like an argument that would 
um, turn out, you know, I mean, it would, it, not really an argument, but, you know, uh, words back and forth that were going on. Yeah, and see, from my perspective, I mean, Stephen and Odilio did a good job. I mean, they presented these numbers, but they, they were just presenting the numbers for the most part. They weren't presenting, um, they weren't trying to address objections or trying to fit this together into a bigger picture. Right. Which, because that's, that's just what you were doing. <laughs> Which is what That's I what you were doing, <laughs> which, which is what I've always done. But but, you know, and so it's not saying that they weren't doing the right thing. No, but but not saying that. <clears throat> but the person who could have helped people to understand it better, they weren't wanting to listen to. Right. Yeah. You know, it was a personal issue. And, and, and that yeah. per, those personal issues are still here. Yeah, and they still existed. They they were inherited and came to the rest of the movement. They that's right. Disappeared. But but anyway, that that's you know we went a little bit over time here. Oops. But, but that's Sorry. okay. That's okay. So um, anyway, we need to close with prayer. So we're going to come back to this uh, uh, tomorrow morning. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful, Lord, again for this study and for the blessings of the light that you've given us. We pray, Lord, that the things that we see and understand, uh, even, though, even though we only see them in part, uh, can be a means to bring healing to our minds, to us spiritually, and in our relationships with others. We pray for those who may not understand fully um, these truths, who question them, who have spoken against them at times, um, we pray, Lord, that you can be with them and that uh, through your spirit and through providence, uh, we can all be able to see how you have led this movement and the purposes uh, that you have for it. Be with each person uh, throughout this day. Bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.